So in the previous video, when we introduced the geometric distribution, you might have noticed that uh, it was quite similar to the binomial distribution in its setup. Um, so for a binomial distribution, there are a few things we know have to be the case. So first of all, there are only two possible outcomes, success or failure. So you've got P, you've got one minus P. Now for the geometric distribution, that is exactly the same. Okay, so yes, we need only two possible outcomes. Now the probability of success P is constant for binomial distribution. And for geometric distribution, that also needs to be the case. So in the previous example, we saw the probability of success uh, of uh, me playing a game uh, was 0.2, and it always remained at 0.2 for all the trials. Okay, so yes, we need the probability of success P to be constant. The trials are independent. Well, if they weren't for the geometric, then we would have the issue of the probability changing. Okay, so for binomial and geometric, we need the trials to be independent. Now the binomial distribution requires, because it's got one of its parameters as n, so when you write down the binomial distribution, you say x is binomially distributed with n number of trials and p as the probability. But for a geometric distribution, there is only one parameter, p, because actually uh, you can trade up the geometric distribution to look at however many trials you want. So in the previous example, I wasn't restricted by saying um, what's the probability that I win my first game on the third go, or on the tenth go, or on the hundredth go, or on the thousandth go. So there is no upper bound there. I can keep on going forever. And so the number of trials n is fixed is not a property of the geometric distribution. OK, so that is where they uh, diverge. So they are the differences uh, between the binomial and geometric distribution.